guess, ten past seven, now's the time to get started. So, hey everybody, welcome to Gab's Dojo once again, and on to lesson three. Um, there was meant to be a lesson last week, but I had to take care of some personal things, so I had to miss out, so hence why the delay, but now I'm back, ready to go. Just a review of the previous lesson, which was on throws and how to uh, how to enforce them and how to defend against them, and that kind of leads into this week's topic, which is basically about the art of defense and punishment. No, watermelon, you're not late. Just about to get started. Um, initially, there were going to be two separate lessons, two separate topics, but I decided with punishment because there isn't a lot I can go into without using frame data. Um, I figured it will be a reduced section, and when it comes to like lessons involving frame data, that will be covered maybe a little bit more in depth. So today it's just going to be um, yeah defense and punishment together. So let's get going. With the idea of art of defense, I'm going to be honest. Defending, obviously, is a very broad project and it's a hard one to actually teach and it is quite hard to learn. Reason being is because in fighting games, the idea is for you to enforce your will against your opponent to make them play the way for you in order to win um, but you can't really enforce defensive play um, when you say enforce your will you are pressuring someone or aggressing someone so therefore when you talk about enforcing will it's usually about offense but as I said you can't enforce defense the only thing you can really do is establish defense but when you establish good defensive play, that in a way is enforcing your will on your opponent because you're telling your opponent, hey, whatever you're trying to do to me, whatever offense you're trying to get to me to open me up, it's not going to work on me. All right, we've got some late stragglers in. Hey, Gabriel, how's it going? Um, so with the lesson, I am aiming to showcase... Um, ways you can defend yourself using the two key things I think you need to know when it comes to defense which is understanding the game and how the game teaches you to defend and understanding the characters you're facing against and how to defend against them so a combination of using the game and using your mind so with that let's get into it I bet I'm going to mess up all of my examples now I spent so much time trying to get good in this. Uh, need to learn that with Katana. Well, you need to learn that with everybody, no matter how good your character is. And I'm well, Gabriel. Hopefully, you're doing well as well. I struggle against Liu Kang because I expect him to grab out of forward 4 3, the less low fireball, such as the Kang match. Right. Let's get going. So let's choose Slay. What was it? Mrs. Cage. Are they even married actually? I don't even know. And let's go for the Adenian best friend. Someone pick a stage for me, please, as always. struggle with Scarlet on the corner or to be rushed down. There's a way to happen for that. There's a way to help. Tarkat and War Camp. Okay. Okay. So in terms of establishing and learning good defense, 
as I mentioned earlier you need to have understanding of the character and understanding of the game uh, one mechanic that exists um, in this game that requires both is flawless blocking um, which it's not the easiest to do but basically with flawless blocking you're allowed to do it in gaps and allows you to punish certain things that you would not be able to normally punish as well as reduce damage and chip etc so with jade for example a lot of jades like to do if I'm controlling the right character that will help a lot of jades like to do uh, the back 3 4 3 4 string so that string now there's a gap in the string and how we know this because we can the flow between it um, so once you know that there's a gap in between a string basically um, we are able to do such a thing like flawless blocking um, at a flawless block you have to time the block in between the gap so in this string it's the third and fourth hit and press block literally just a few frames before it's going to hit you so let's see if I can get this in one go like so I didn't get a second time but you see what I mean so with that that gives you now an opportunity to punish that string um, so with Sonya you can do something like that straight up punish or if you've got the skill something like that so when this only works because I know very well the gap in Jade's string so when it comes to better defense you do need to know the characters that you're fighting against where their gaps are um, and what you can do with them if you, if anything because some get, uh, gaps and strings you can flawless block but you don't get anything from it um, and for a way to find out whether your own strings have gaps or whether your opponent's has gaps is if you set the opponent to custom block all and do flawless it will automatically block the first hit but anything that has a gap in it um, it will also flawless block it so for example if I just did Sonya's back one, two, three. It will flawless block the first hit, but it will just normal block the rest, like so. But if I can do another string, it will showcase where there are gaps for flawless block to work. Fucking like that string. Back two, three, four. Since there's two gaps in it, you can flawless block every gap, and that's a way to learn um, characters strings where their gaps are and what you can do uh, regarding that no watermelon b1 should not be a mid can't ask for that another thing in understanding the character and the tools that they have and what they use is um, jade likes to do mix-ups with forward two um, especially in Emerald Defender she likes to do forward 2 and low wave and which is a low and forward 2 1 which is the overhead now if I take over Jade br briefly and show the moves if you notice 421 wave comes out slightly quicker than 421. So, because that is the case, there is an opportunity to do something which is called Fuzzy Guard. Now, 
Fuzzy Guard has different terms in other fighting games, but in this particular case, Fuzzy Garden is basically blocking a mix up which has different timings, so such as a low into a quick overhead or an overhead in into a low. Um, so, what you can do with learning the timings is that you can do a blocking pattern for when forward two comes you can block stand block immediately crouch block for a brief moment of time and then stand block again and when you do that what would happen is J's forward two will hit and you stand block that brief moment of time where you crouch block if she does wave you will block it and you can get a punish if she doesn't do wave you can immediately stand up and block 4 2 1 and then punish that string. So, just as a showcase, I am going to. Let's get him close. I'm going to record Jade doing both moves now. Ah, oh, let's give it a floors block. That will help. And then get her to record the other head. So now I'm gonna set play back to random hidden. So um basically it will randomly choose between doing forward one four two one and four two low wave. Um, but I won't say what it's gonna show me and I'm going to try and showcase this fuzzy guard technique. Um, of how to block this. Hopefully this works. Like so. So because you have that in your arsenal if you know that timing, when Jades go for that mix-up, you will be able to punish both options. So, oops. Ah, oh, just missed that. But you get the idea. There we go. So. It does require some timing, it does require some practice, but for certain characters you can do this and with the example of Jade, if you were able to do that consistently, you are now enforcing your will on your opponent by showing that I now have to defend this mix up and punish you consistently, so therefore you can't really use this mix up against me. So you're going to have to find a different way to open me up. Demetria sub, really? Okay. So, there is another example regarding this that I know people have issues uh, blocking. And Watermelon gets a shout out for mentioning that. And that is Sub-Zero. Nice. Um, so let's go with Sonny's daughter Sub -Zero. and Sub Zero. Should I play Dimitri? I should have put a Dimitri skin on Thin Ice, but I didn't. I put it on Dead of Winter, but I need Thin Ice, which is unfortunate. But never mind. Anyway, I. Not gonna ask you to pick a stage because I need to pick Shang's Island Shang for Zing's good reason, which will come later. Oh, why are people hating on Dimitri skin, man? It's like one of those 80s films or 90s films where bad dubs are just fun, part of the charm. But anyway, Sub Zero. A lot of people are not a fan of this thing here. 
lot of people are not a fan of that because it is very quick sometimes very tricky to block um, and when mixed in with his low it seems to be a 50-50 you have to guess which way blocking low or blocking overhead now for a long time I was one of those where I believed that some people said you can react and block the overhead and I was one of those that believed that you couldn't and then when I started practicing doing it over and over and over again I have to admit while it is difficult it is actually possible to do it and it's Brittany that's the thing no the, the overhead axe is an well the axe is an overhead yes but the axe kick is two mids and yes power you're right fuzzy blocking so with sub You can fuzzy the uh, the mix up, but it is difficult. It is very very. It is difficult. It does require practice, and it's definitely easier offline than online. So what I'm going to do firstly, I'm just going to showcase how to block the overhead into slide. If I can do the slide first. Okay. Now, its basic key is instantly is this. Once the overhead hits you just immediately crouch block the reason being is because the act the axe kick fucking do it is two mids as you can see there so there's no reason for you to stand block um, so you can just block the overhead and then immediately go to crouch block now in terms of the mix up I'm going to try and do it, I'm going to try and showcase to you that it can be done so I'm just going to record Sub-Zero into a throw and then take a step and do the low and then do one of repeating the same but doing the overhead into slide and see if I can do this so first one and then record two Okay, so I'm going to do random hidden playback so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to eat the throw and then I'm going to try and block this mix up by, well, I'm going to be crouch blocking most of the time and then I'm going to see if I can react to the overhead and block correctly. See what happens. There you go. Now the only reason why I'm able to do that is ah oh, no, I've seen it on two. All right, do over. Never mind. Okay, so he went for the low. Stayed blocking low. Got hit by the low because I didn't stay blocking. There we go. I could do it one more time. You like that low, don't you? You can do the overhead anytime soon. No, you can do it again. No, you don't like doing the overhead, do you? He's not going to do it again. But anyway, you saw it <laughs> once before. <laughs> Damn you, sub, man. That's what happens when you have a perfect plan. Get a perfect plan, it's never perfectly executed. Because I'm relying on a computer to do its job. But anyway. Um, as I showed the example, it can actually be done. Uh, now, as I said, offline is easier than, off uh, than online. Um, but if you can block the overhead, what is the clue is the animation. 
So when I mentioned about better defense, you need to understand the character's moves. Knowing a character's properties um, when they are used and more importantly, the animations as well is a way of indicating to get better defense because what helped me react to Sub-Zero's um, overhead was him waving his hands up in the air like he doesn't care before bringing that axe down um, and seeing that motion um, triggers that right he's going for the overhead then we quickly let go down to block and then go forward so once you do that you can think about it for sub-zero that if you were able to react to this consistently sub-zero players thinking what they're going to do because this is their main way of opening people up this is my main way of getting damage if I can't do my low overhead mix-up the only way I can really do think to open you up is either punishing your mistakes or going for the mix-up between throws and strikes but at the same time if you go back to lesson two where I showcase how to defend against throws if you then showcase tech in throws consistently or neutral duck in throws and punishing them what is the sub player going to do? the only way they can win really is if you make a mistake now and that's because you've established your defense against his offense and enforced your will against them by saying that hey you're, the way you're trying to open me up to try and get your damage it's not working on me you're gonna have to find something else and if that person doesn't have anything else uh, match is basically in your hands so these kinds of things is what you need to understand when it comes to characters uh, well understanding what characters have uh, in order to get better defense now since we've gone through that the next step is to go through what the game offers you for better defense so there is a wake up system in this game and that is one of the things that helps you get better defense because you could block all the time but there are times where you need to counter attack so just as preparation I'm just going to record sub doing a couple of things uh, so I want to do sweep into low sweep into throw and I want to do sweep into throw if I actually get the throw if I actually can get the throw jeez my execution's not good tonight right so wake ups you have up three just going to briefly quickly go through the wake up system invincible attack um it's generally safe most of the time actually let me set the bar to refill so i don't get any issues um generally safe attack um and just resets neutral um loses to jump ins attack or neutral jumps though uh, you've got up twos which do a launch and sometimes can combo but they lose to um, normals that's it and then you've got rolls slightly different timing than wake up but forward and backward rolls to dodge buttons but they lose to throws like so so that's generally the wake up system so it's a bit of a rock paper scissors up three beats buttons loses to jump ins up twos beat jump ins loses to buttons rolls beat buttons and jump ins but loses to throws and throws loses to the up threes and up twos so that's the circle that goes around in addition to that though the other thing that helps you defend in the game is what the stage gives you which are i don't want ai what am i doing right which are these things interactables now not many people use interactables to be honest um actually you know what let me get sub 
quicker. Not that many people use this because it is expensive, but um, obviously with interactables, cost a bar, defensive meter to use, and can be hit out of. However, when you do it on wake up, if you press the interactable button with R2, while expensive, since it costs you two bars of offensive and one bar of defensive, you get an armored interactable to basically go through your stuff. So, if I record sub sweeping me and doing that string. Like so. Now, as you can see, it's very expensive. Two bars of offensive and one bar of defensive. However, if you are under the cosh of so much pressure um, that you just needed to have a break or you needed just to get someone away for a bit to have a breather or to zone or um, gather your thoughts, it's a bit, it's something to bear in mind if you're near an interactable just to do that. Um, and to get armor. The other thing that's um, <laughs> this actually really annoys me so I'm kind of annoyed that I'm going to showcase this but it's important because people need to know. It's one of my biggest pet peeves in this game. Corner. Some stages have um, corner escapes. Bar meter allows you to run out for free. Like so. Now usually you can't really do much about it because, well, can't do anything because you'll get hit out of it. Like if I just recorded sub, just doing back one, back one, three. I got hit, tried to get out. Oh, that works. Um, but usually it's a risk. Um, However, when you do it on wake up, it can actually be very, very strong. Um, so just to prove a point, I'm just going to record sub doing a sweep and into various of fins, various different fins. So sweep into throw, and we're going to do sweep into low. And we're going to do sweep into overhead, and we're going to do sweep it's fatal blow. Oh, I think I timed that wrong. There we go. Now, as I mentioned about wake ups, you've got um, the guessing game um, where. Up three speed buttons, but loses to um, you know loses to jumps and up two beats uh, buttons or beats jumps, but loses the buttons and so on and so on. When you're in the corner and you've got a corner escape, um, you can remove the guessing game by just jumping up. So first one. He does a sweep into a throw. Jumps straight out for free. If we do his sweep into the low, out for free. If we do his sweep into the overhead, like so, out again. I mean, you literally can see the axe hitting Cassie, but straight up. And even the old fatal blow. Um, now, as to why this happens, that will probably be covered in my frame data lesson because it's involving what's called invincible frames. Uh, but to briefly touch upon it, Basically, there's a certain window where 
when you start an animation for doing that corner escape, you are fully invincible. So no matter what you do, it goes straight through the person. Um, so basically immune, similar to how if you play Street Fighter, whenever Ryu and Ken did like a dragon punch, you always got hit by it, even if you're trying to time a move as they're getting up, because they have what's called invincible frames as well. So with corner escapes, and there's a lot of them, I will put a list of what interactables this works with because there's some numerous ones on the corner as well as mid screen like um um wushi dragon grotto the sword in the middle of the screen that works exactly the same way that if you're knocked down by that screen wake up interactable will just get you out of any pressure um Not many people do remember to use them, to be fair. I'm guilty of it as well. Um, maybe because I'm too honest, I like to fight my way out of a corner. But yeah, especially if you're like a zonal, like Scarlet, who doesn't have the best buttons in the world. Um, or Jade, if you're in a corner, you know you've got a corner escape and you've been knocked down. Just, if, as long as you've got a defensive bar, that is. Just press the button, corner escape, and you're back in mid screen, you can zone again. Uh, you don't really see this often because, you know, I'm guessing maybe it's the assumption that you would beat it on the wake up, but as I've discovered, that's not seem to be the case. Uh, the only way you can stop them is that if you do a hard read and just do a jump kick as they're running up. But if they don't do that, then you've given up your advantage. You've given up your turn. Um, so that's the risk to that. Um, but I guess before I go to a bit of the main event, let me have a quick catch up in the chat because I have been ignoring you a lot for quite a bit. Da, da. Oh, does everyone complain about fatalities in Scorpion? Sounds new. I guess forward free is invincible when Katana does up free wake up. I don't know why. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, hey, Siren Bay, good to see you. No problem. Can you do delay get up on the situation? Yes, yes. I actually completely forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. Last thing for wake up is delay get up, um, which you just hold L2 uh, to do that. Whoops. There you go, like that. So that's another thing in the wake up game. So learning the characters or understanding their moves, their animations, their properties allows you to figure out ways to defend against them and punish them. Learning the options the game gives you gives you opportunities to defend yourself against pressure. Um, wake ups, armoured interactables, corner escapes. Sometimes though you will have occasions where these options won't be available to you, whether you've spent the bar from breaking a combo, you're on a stage that doesn't have a corner escape, or it might be a matchup that you don't know. What goes through your mind when defending against something or someone? And this is usually one of the biggest killers, I think, in defense. Aside of lack of knowledge, in my opinion, one of the biggest killers in defending or worthwhile defending is fear. Fear of um, pressing the button, fear of not knowing um, what is happening next, what the opponent is doing, fear of losing, generally, fear of getting hit. Um, now you can block, but if you block forever, um, you're just basically giving the advantage to the opponent. You allow the opponent to do whatever they want, you allow them to start their throwing game, and it even says in the game that you shouldn't block forever. 
you kind of need to know when to counterattack or have a counterattack. But the harsh truth of it all is that if you want to get better at fighting games, if you want to improve in aspects and including defense as one of them, you have to show no fear. And in showing no fear, you need to have the mantra of playing to learn. See, if you are playing to win, you're going to have fins that will hold you back. Not that it's a bad fin, but you will have fins that hold you back compared to playing to learn. And in playing to learn, you do have to try out fins. Trial and error is very common in fighting games. Um, pressing this to see what what if I do this in this situation, does that work? No. Okay. What if I try this? Maybe this will work. No. Okay. If I try this, yes, this works. Okay. I have an answer. Um, but when it comes to defending, if you're showing fear, showing fear basically means you're afraid of losing or you're afraid of getting hit. So if you're afraid of getting hit, you're afraid of losing. And you only are afraid of losing because you're playing to win. Because in theory, if you're playing to learn, there should be no fear because everything's a learning process of how to get better. So that is the mantra that people need to have in order um, What's I trying to say? I lost my train of thought because of sound based comment. It's not fair that so much knowledge exclusively stored in your brain. You need to share. I am sharing. I'm doing my best. Um, <laughs> so, playing to learn is very important. You try things out in a match. If it doesn't work, you review it. Maybe go into training mode to see what you can do to get better and gain knowledge. And then you try again. And eventually you'll get your answers at each point. Now, in relation to this, I think let's go to our favorite character that everyone loves to see. Okay. And let's go... Kitana. Partner in crime. Someone pick a stage, please. <laughs> I'm jealous of gaps. <laughs> Hourglass, thank you. The Hourglass. I'm n what do you mean I'm always mean to you, Sarangbei? I don't believe that. Um, J Dog, when people teabag you, it just gets to you. Um, teabag, I find really weird. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Tea I never understood teabags. I know to a lot of people, it's the biggest form of disrespect you can show to a person. But to me, I'm, maybe I'm just blessed or something. Um, but they don't really affect me. Um, if I see someone teabag, I kind of find it funny. I just laugh. Because um, they they have their 10 seconds of fame. Or their 10 seconds of enjoyment. Where they think they're making me salty. But realistically to me. It's like. Your 10 seconds of glory. Or fame. Or satisfaction. I'm basically just learn knowledge in a match that to make sure that I will improve and nine times out of ten if a person teabags me when I play them again they don't win so that's also helpful um, people need to be quicker in the stages <laughs> I refuse to swap brains that's why I am mean well, Saring Bay, to be honest, if I was able to swap brains with people, um, I probably wouldn't do it anyway. When you have a Gavin Mitt, when, did you, when you did a comeback and they teabagged you before, it's kind of satisfying to teabag them back. I imagine people do find it satisfying, I just don't do it. I've never actually teabagged a person 
ever in any fighting game. Be well, because I personally don't get it. But that's just me. I know I'm very unique or very alien in that. But anyway, let's get to this Joker here. Let me switch to Katana for a bit. We can. Um, a lot of people do have problems with Liu Kang, especially this uh, infamous great string here. Um. So, <laughs> Liu Kang, or you mean Liu Four Forward Four? So with Liu Kang, as we know, Forward Four string is his go-to string, and he has a bunch of mix-ups um, that he can do with it, or a bunch of options. And it's kind of frustrating because he has so many options, and then you wonder, what can you do about them? Or I have to guess when it's my turn, and when I guess. It's, and I guess wrong, I get punished for it, and it's really frustrating on top of his zonings, etc, etc. Um, doesn't he start low and you can low block his strings? They're actually all mids, uh, Pyro. So with Lou, as I said with a character, you've got to learn all of his options. So, to quickly go through all the options that Lou has. He's got forward four stagger, which he can do into another forward four if he wants, or forward four into throw. You've got forward four free stagger, which you can then go into a throw, or do another forward four. You've got forward four free low fireball, which is punishable. Forward four free low fireball amplified, if I can do it. Oops, that's parry. There we go. You've got 443 parry. And you've got forward forward free. Full string. Forward. There's actually another option that not many Liu Kangs do. I don't know why they don't do it, because it's actually very good. Which is 443 into uh, stance mode free. Not that. That. Very good option for Kang, and it's a safe option. But not many Kangs do it. I really don't know why, but they don't. Anyway, um, they can actually also go into a mid over string as well um, from that. Yeah. So now we know all the options that Lou has. We kind of have to break each one of them down um, and figure out ways to deal against it. And yes, Pyromaniac, not many people do it. There's only three people I've seen use that, and that's Dizzy, Silver Rai, and Ninja Killer. There's probably others, but only those three. Right, so, Lou. So, if we're someone, what can we do? So I'm just going to record a few of these quick. Actually, I want them blocking. So, so we're going to do four, four into throw. That's one, and we're going to do four, four, three into throw again, and we're going to do four, four, three into fireball, and. Four, four, three, amplified. So, with the first one, put it back one. Four, four, into throw. If we go back to lesson one, one I said that regarding the poke system, if you block a poke or block a move, it is usually your turn. If you read that it's going to stagger, you can technically just press a button and it should be whatever follow up. Oops. Like so. Or if you read the down two, then you can. When you read the throw, you can do question break down two. 
like a whole block to look out for it. So that's one option if you read the forward four stagger. If it's forward four three into a throw, same thing. It's not his turn. You can press a button. Or punish if you're good enough. Get the timer right. Or duck and get your pressure, down two pressure blow. Um, if you read that they're going to do 4 for 3 into the fireball, that is a straight up punish, as you can see. Oops. But no, it's punish properly. Like so. I'm not going to do katana combos because I suck it. <laughs> And last, similar for the Amplified. Now with the Amplified, that always goes over your head, whether you're blocking or not. So it's just a whiff punish. Gotcha. So... Hey Samino, how's it going? Um, But I've only gone through some of the options as well. But, we now know, in terms of defending against Liu Kang's mixups, we have an option against every single one. So if it goes for forward four stagger, you can press a button or counter with your own button, counter with your own string. If you have a read forward four free stagger, you can counter into with your own poke or with your own string. Four four three into a low fireball, full combo punish. 443 into a amplifier fireball you duck the high one or stay crouched block until the high one goes over your head and then you whiff punish with a fast button and it's good to see you join the class for the first time Samino hopefully you gain something from it um still new to this kind of thing so hopefully people are learning something and that actually reminds me bear me one moment okay Um, but there are still a few more options. So we have, what else have I got to cover? I've got to cover parry. And I've got to cover the full string. And the new Yeah, actually, I will leave it at those two. Actually, no, no, I did in the index up as well. Okay, so with parry. Um, wait a minute, why am I being called lazy? What the hell? <laughs> Unless that's to the other Gabriel, not to me. <laughs> Pyro. Anyway. With parry. Of course, when you press a button. Ooh, wrong one. You get hit by the parry. So to beat parries, you either have to go for a low attack, like back three. Like so. Or you can if you wait for the flames to start disappearing, you can actually whiff punish. Oh, drop the combo, of course I would. But yeah. Like so. See, I suck at katana combos. But you can see what my point is. Um with the full string it's also no you can just poke in between and get a full string in if you can and that is also the common one for the last mix up 
uh, this is safe. Oh, if anyone's paying attention there, there's some secret tech. I imagine most people may have missed that. But yeah, that low is safe, so you can't really do anything, but it is your turn, so you can counter with your own button. So now that you know all of the options, we've now come up with a counter against every single one of those Liu Kang options. And what you find is your best way to defend all depends on the player. Um, because a lot of players don't do all of these things. They only do like two of those things, three of those things, maybe four at most. But you will find that once you know all those options, it basically changes the forward four meta into a read based game where you just have to make your guess when you think what move he's going to do and commit to it. If um, you end up guessing wrong, it's okay. It's okay to guess wrong. Um, let's say you get hit by the crushing blow. If you get hit by the crushing blow um, from the full string, you lose like 350 damage. It happens once. So you know next time he goes for that full string, he, um, the fear of getting hit is it's less because there is no crushing blow, there's no big damage across it. And if you think about it, every one of those options, despite it being an entire guessing game, once that crushing blow has been removed, apart from the parry, um, there's really not much damage he's getting from the rest of those strings. So you kind of have to play with no fear. Now, let's have a quick look at the chat. Can I look if you have the time to double JB to Katane safe? That's still on my agenda to look after the stream, Gabriel. So I will let you know. Um, Try blocking against Jack second variation. Is that hunker down or grin and Barrett? I can't remember. <laughs> um, actually, no, why don't we just have a quick look now? Gabriel, we'll just have a quick look. Quick little detour. See if this is safe or not. Uh, to block it all. Cool. Uh, I've got to remember how to cancel float now. How do I cancel? How do I do float in this variation? <laughs> I'm so bad at Katana. Fan tools, fan tools, fan there. Fan flyer, down back to you. Okay, cool. Alright, I've got to get that down. Uh, that doesn't look safe to be honest. Oh, it is actually. Oh. Alright, you might be able to anti a straight, but if they do block both hits, it is actually safe. But yes, you do risk on the anti air if they read it. So there you go. Okay, hunker down power, that's fine. Anyway, back to the lesson. Uh, we've gone through Liu Kang, we've gone through his 4 4 options and all his counters. There's also a specific reason why I picked Katana for this because um, Katana has uh, some very unique um, abilities in this game. Oh, I bet it hasn't recorded. Okay, let me have to record Liu Kang again. Okay. I don't want to do that. I want to do fireball. I want to do full string. And I want to do. And I want to do parry. Right. Katana has something a little bit special in this match. Let's see if I can get it right. Okay. 
notice if you block it a certain way, three from four four three whiffs. Why is that a big deal? It's because of all the options I've given, if I just set everything to random hidden playback and I block it correctly, even if it cancels into fireball, cancels into parry or cancels into um, the full string, the only thing that will work will be the full string. Everything else will not work. I block it right that is. Which I'm not blocking right now. Let me record. It's working work individually. Hmm. Interesting. Not as consistent now. Thank you, game. Thinking I have a consistent tech, and now it's telling me it's not consistent. Jeez. Shouts to Mortal Kombat. Anyway, if you can get that consistently, which requires some practice, and Katana is the only character I know that this works with, um, basically it nullifies the mix-up game because if three whiffs, it can't be cancelled into any button. So when that happens, let's see if I can get it. Why is this not working? It's not working, that sucks. Anyway. Oh man, this game. How it is supposed to work. You stand block the first hit of Ford 4 and then you automatically crouch block. If done correctly, the second kick will whiff and that will give you a free punish into whatever you want. Because there'll be a huge gap between not being able to cancel a button or if he's going for 4 3 4 you'll be able to um, punish that gap in between Man, I'm actually quite salted I didn't work now but at least you have evidence that it did work because I showed the showcase examples before the game told me nah son one's supposed to reveal that secret tech to you um, credit to Ccat who mentioned the tech and put it in a public chat so that's how I know so it wasn't me who just discovered it I have to give credit where credit's due Ah, this game, man. But anyway, um, to review the Art of Defense, um, gone over understanding the character and understanding the game, the way the game teaches you how to defend, the way um, the game, um, well, the way you have to understand characters' moves, properties, and animations in order to block effectively. And establishing good defense allows you to enforce your will on the opponent and put them on the back foot to give you control of the game. Um, it does come with time, it does come with knowledge. Um, don't worry, it's a bit of a. It is a bit of a. It's not a race in order to get everything as quick as possible. Um, Take your time, if there's things you struggle with, you go into trainer mode, you see if you can replicate what is causing you issues and then what you can do to defend against it. And then if you do that by bit by bit, then eventually the knowledge you accumulate would be able to, for you to handle a matchup better or multiple matchups better or even playing styles better. Um, so that is the key thing about defending so i'm now going to briefly go over punishment very briefly this is not going to be long all of anti lusty players are watching this stream right now <laughs> um Let's go to my go-to guys. Lovely Miss Briggs. And Papa G. Pick a stage, any stage. To 
be honest, people saying Jade is the most annoying character, but bitch like subs, random ass slides forward for Luke and skill his teleport. Is it taking skills to spam one thing, but when I use a single projectile as Jade and it's used in a combo, you can only so. <laughs> it's, it's a trash talker. Very true. Um, a lot of people complain about a lot of things. Kite and Hive. People love this stage. Time the stage. Really, really do. I mean, I'm indifferent to it, but you know, it's, it's got some love. I'm, I'm buying it surprising. <laughs> Lusty, please stay. You might as well stay. I mean, this stage is technically named after you, Lusty, so. That's how they're crediting. It's because of your play as a uh, Devorah, so they were inspired to do a stage after you. You know, MKX Devorah wasn't uh, too shabby, so there you go. Lusty gets the stage. Anyway. Garrus. Uh, I want to be on the left, actually. I prefer to be on the left. So, punishment is crucial in fighting games because your op well, your goal is to beat your opponent to a pulp. So, whenever you have the opportunity to punish, you have to make the most of your opportunities. And because you have to make the most of your opportunities, it is something that does need to be practiced. Um, however, let's say you don't know anything about frame data, how could you punish, how can you practice punishment, how can you learn punishment? And a lot of it does come down to a bit of trial and error, oh, trial and error. Welcome back Saren Bay. Um, oh, the reason people complain about Jade is because the way she plays the game, she's anti-meta. She doesn't allow you to do the things that you want to do. So because of that, it's easy to complain about that. Um, same things for what happened with Melina. MKX is all about running in and doing your mix-ups. Running in, doing offense. MKX Melina literally played the anti-meta and stopped you from playing MKX. That's why she got a lot of hate. Apart from hitbox issues. But anyway, moving on. Um, Garrus... A lot of people got caught with a 1-1 mix-up. Now that generally is punishable. But let's say we didn't know that was punishable. 1 would we do? Because there are times I've seen people block 4 combo punishable fins but don't do anything. Like even backdash or uh, block and then jump in and do something. Whatever. So for me, my first test to find out whether something is punishable is to do a reversal throw. If nothing appears on that, then I know that the move might be negative, so it's my turn to press buttons, but it's not might not be punishable per se. But if I do see Punish appear, I know, right, I know that move I could punish with a throw. But then I can also say that, well, normals, like pokes for example, um, are faster than throws generally. So maybe I can use that to do a punish. Ah, so my down one can punish this. So can my down three. So can my down four. So if I know my pokes punish, usually standing normals like my standing one is a similar speed as a down one or a down three. So maybe standing one will be work as a punish. And just see if that works. So we're now at the stage where we have lit in a space of a couple of minutes we have gone from a move that we wasn't sure was punishable to know that it's very punishable then you know you can take your turn back with a poke and it can also uh punish with a standard normal 
things that I commonly see with some players that once they get that answer that they know they can do a throw or they know they're going to do a poke they that's all they do that is their answer so whenever someone does this thing they retaliate with the poke or retaliate with the throw but realistically you can get so much more so we've gone from poke to no standing one so that means that a standing one string will work as a punish So we know that as a case that basically means that if a standard one string can work as a punish you can do your standard one combo whatever that may be ah oh, my execution is so poor today Like so. Um, but once that is also known, you know you can use your standard one. Maybe you can use a slower normal. Wow, that's bad execution. But now we know that a slower normal works. And then you might think, well, I know I've got crushing blows that has um, that is at a similar speed, and that can punish it. Or the requirement is a counter and a punish of a move, so maybe I can use that. So. We've now gone from learning something whether we were not sure that it was punishable to the point of actually having a crush and blow combo that can be used as a punish. Um, on top of that, once you figure that out, maybe you decide you're going to go for your max damage combo or something. Down or land this. So, we have now gone from finding out a move that we didn't know was punishable, we were not sure about frames, to upgrading to a throw, to a poke, to a standing normal to a crushing blow into a crushing blow slash fatal blow combo to do like half-life um, and all this was without knowing frame data so once you know frames um, things like this will be easier to figure out but in case you wanted to learn how to punish something and you weren't sure how to make it work you can use this method in order to um, yeah, basically in order to um, figure out what you can use to punish. And that is that. Um, so in terms of punishment, you got to learn your combos, but you also got to practice them as well, because some of them are very tight windows. Um, some are very hard punishes and they do require practice, but it's important because you don't want your opponent to make a mistake and you let them get away with it. Because if you do, then you start giving them the advantage. And with that, um, lusty. So it's best to punish with the fastest start of frame, right? When you're going through it, yes. Um, and when you try things out, you may find that it might not be your fastest move, but your most damaging move might be better. Um, so it's important to like experiment. And practice what you can but the safe option yeah if you go for your fastest move your fastest string um, that would be the safe way to always get damage you might leave damage on the table in what you could get like you might do 28 percent instead of 33 for example but it's always important to get something down something down is better than nothing and with that 
that is the end of the lesson uh, for defense and punishment and uh, on top of that, that is actually the end of uh, the level one topics. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. I know people are watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, um, like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff, I guess. <laughs> I'm really terrible at self-promotion. I need to work on that. Um, but on top of that, um, just to say a new announcement um, from next week it's going to be another lesson and going forward these lessons are now going to be weekly instead of bi-weekly so next week we're going to start into level 2 and for those that remember level 2 lessons are basically going to be looking at more the technical things and why things work the way they do and I'm going to start next Thursday, similar time, and it will be on the big elephant in the room, which is frame data. So the plan is, um, oh, I'm going to catch up in the chat, so I see some crazy things going on. Um, the plan is for next Thursday. It's going to be on frame data, explaining all of it and how it works, um, what each section means, what each part means. I'm trying to explain it as simple as possible so that everyone can get an understanding of it. And then, because I want them close together, the second part of a frame data lesson will be done on the Monday at this moment in time. So Thursday, frame data part one, which will be the ins and outs of frame data and Monday would be part two which would be using the application of frame data and um, basically once you know how it is what you would use it for what certain terms mean and taking that forward now the reason why I want that close together is because it's a lot to take in and while it is a lot to learn I think it'd be better to have it close together so you can learn them both kind of like at the same time instead of having a week break and going away and then coming back um so that would be it for next thursday um again for those watching on youtube thanks for tuning in and have a good evening take care